Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Oh, hello there. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. My name is Austin. And I got a question for you. What would the real pros and cons be of resurrecting an extinct species? One what if scenario that we can that we can look into is basically what if we have resurrected an extinct species of predator, in this case, the Smilodon fatalis, saber tooth cat, and introduce it to an island off the coast of Southern California, Santa Catalina Island, to control the population of non native herbivores. The saber tooth cat, or Smilodon fatalis, meaning deadly knife tooth. It is also known as incorrectly as the saber-toothed tiger. This big cat is a specialized predator that hunts in packs in North America during the last ice age, over 1 million to 10,000 years ago, hunting only the large herbivores that roamed the continent at the time. These included bison, mammoths, ground sloths, wild horses, and so on. Many species of saber-toothed cats were pretty large in size, but this one is about the same size and weight of a modern African lion, Panthera leo, reaching about 40 inches in height that touched to the point of the shoulder and weighing between 300 to 620 pounds. However, the saber-toothed cat is more heavily built than the average lion, thanks to its uh, bulky build, short tailed and forearms longer than its hind limbs, it, it is an ambush predator, not built for speed. In order to stock its prey, it needs bushes and forested areas to be able to get close enough. The Save Tooth Cat is known, best known, for its two iconic 7-inch long upper canine teeth that they use to swiftly kill prey via crushing the windpipe and cutting up all the major blood vessels and arteries. Ironically, due to their length and narrowness, these canines are actually quite fragile. Due to this, Big cat cannot bite into bone, so generally only eating fleshier parts of the carcass, leaving the rest to leaving the rest of the scavengers and young cubs. Though there is some evidence that they sometimes do eat bones, but they have to be more careful about it than than African lions do. This feeding style can be a bit wasteful, and and with this kind of feeding style, it could even eat a rabbit, let alone a human. It is theorized that the saber-toothed cat died out as a, com a combination of climate change, habitat destruction, and a, a decrease in large game population. The best uh, sources of DNA that could probably be used for recreation would be from specimens of La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles, California. The island in question is Santa Catalina Island, located 22 miles off the coast of Los, An Los Angeles, California. The island is about 75 square miles in size, and while somewhat populated and a common tourist and recreational area, most of the island is owned by the Cantalina Island Conservancy. Conservancy. The island is home to some species of plants and animals that are endemic to the area, and are found nowhere else in the United States. These species include the island foxes, Santa Catalina Island harvest mouse, ornate shrews, Cantalina Island, Ironwood, and so forth. But these populations have been threatened by non-native species such as goats, pigs, cats, etc. While several of these non-natives have been eradicated from the island, there are some that are still residing on the island. One such species is a herd of American bison or buffalo, the prey species of the saber-toothed cat. The bison were said to be introduced there by a film production crew in 1924, although this is debated. Regardless of their origin on the island, their population has been growing unchecked for decades, from the original 14 or 24 in the 1920s to around 400 individual bison around 1970. At present, as a result of culling, roundup, shipping, and birth control, the population is currently around 150 to 200 bison. That population, according to research, is the near maximum 300 head on the that the island can support due to its low precipitation, not a lot of rainfall. 
The kind of ecological, ecological damage that the bison have caused to the island includes destruction of riparian areas and plant communities, spread of invasive plants, overgrazing, and soil erosion. The bison are, at, are still present on the island due to the fact that the locals like them. They are important for tourism and control the amount of fuel fire of dry plants on the island. So what would happen when a small pack of saber-toothed cats have been introduced to Santa Catalina Island to hunt the buffalo? What are the pros and cons? Believe it or not, there are some actual pros associated with introducing saber-toothed cats in this situation. One such pro is that a small pack of saber-toothed cats can easily con control uh, the population of bison without spending a lot of time and money on roundups and birth control. The saber-toothed cats could control the population by taking down a bison once or twice every week. We can verify, verify this by researching and understanding the hunting patterns of lions and other big cats. Also, since saber-toothed cats are ambush predators, they will only hunt bison in forested and riparian areas. These are in fact the areas that the bison are causing ecological damage to. With the threat of being pounced upon in these areas apparent, the bison will only visit these areas only for a short period of time, just, as, just long enough they can get the amount of water needed, which will minimize any sort of damage to these certain areas. Also, the effects of introducing predators would have other positive effects on their behavior, one of which is that they will graze more closely, closely, to, get closely to each other, and this would control the distribution of wild, wildfire fuel more effectively while minimizing the continued eco, eco damage and creating an environment for rapid recovery in these areas. We know this by observing the effects of reintroduced wolves to Yellowstone National Park. While the bison would be the saber-toothed cat's primary prey item, there are some other species on the islands that the cats would probably be able to prey upon, but we'll get to that later. The predation of the saber tooth would also benefit the native species as well. With the reintroduction of bald eagles happening currently on the island, the eagles have had some issues with recovering from their local extinction. As mentioned earlier, saber tooth cats only usually consume the fleshier parts of the kills and leave the rest of the elements in scavengers. On the mainland, carrion plays a big part of the bald eagle's diet during certain time parts of the year. With the saber toothed cats leaving excess meat all over the island, the eagles could use this as an alternative food source during times of food scarcity. This may also be an exceptional source of food for the island foxes, though this is not as certain. Crows and ravens are also present on the island. They would also benefit from the supply of carrion that the saber toothed cats would provide as well, like they would with wolf kills in Yellowstone. Turkey vultures have also been sighted on the island as well, so they would obviously benefit from the saber tooth hunting. While they're not currently present on the island, the Californian condor would benefit from this as well. During the Ice Age, the condor has scavenged off kills from predators like the saber tooth. With this in mind, it is not unthinkable that the condors would benefit from this well enough that they could probably be introduced to the island. Along with being an ecological benefit to the island, this proposal could also be an economic benefit to the inhabitants as well. In Africa, tourists come from all over the world to come and see the many beautiful animals there, with big cats being among the most popular and desired. In this situation, it is not different, but it has a twist. The t twist is, is where else could you get to see saber-toothed cats resurrected and in the wild? Tourists will no doubt pay to go to Santa Catalina Island, not just to enjoy the sunshine and the bison, but also to experience their own Jurassic Parkish tour from a safe distance or in the safety of a tour bus, of course. While this situation would have considerable pros, it also would have quite a few cons as well. One of which is that while the saber toothed cats would definitely control the bison population, the population of the said cats would have to be controlled by humans. In African models, you would need about 200 horse-sized prey items or so to support one lion pride in its lifetime. As mentioned earlier, Santa Catalina Island cannot support more than 300 bison on the whole island, at least the parts that the bison are free to roam on. With this in mind, 
we would have to either sterilize the cats, birth control them, or annually take a new cubs from their mother and put them into captivity. There is also the potential of them preying on other species. Bison would be the main animal that it would hunt on the island, but there are at least two other hooped animals on the island that the saber-toothed cat could hunt. One such hooped animal that is very common on the island is the mule deer. Introduced in the early 1930s for hunting purposes, the mule deer has grown into a population of thousands on the island. While it's definitely common on the island, it's not likely that Smilodon would hunt this deer in great abundance. This is mostly due to that the deer's weight on average is between 100 and 300 pounds, lightly built and very speedy. This species does not fit within the Smilodon's range of prey, significantly larger and slower animals like the bison. But this won't stop them from trying, and it's possible that young Smilodon might be able to make do with the mule deer, but even so, it won't be done with great abundance. Another species of hoofstock introduced to the island is a very curious species of antelope native to India. The black buck, introduced in 1967, was brought to the island for hunting purposes like the, black, like the mule deer before it. However, unlike the mule deer, the black buck was not very successful on the island and is only in a small population near the island's airport, perhaps no more than a dozen individuals. Even if it wasn't in a significant population size, the Smilodon would run into the same problem as with the mule deer, smaller in size, weight, and more agile. Smilodon would definitely try to hunt them, but they wouldn't be very successful at it. Along with the island's hoof stock, there is another source of food that the Smilodon could take advantage of that we don't currently see in the fossil record, pinnipeds. For those of you who don't know, this is the family of mammals that include seals and sea lions. The species that reside on Santa Catalina includes sea lions, harbor seals, and elephant seals. While we currently do not have proof that Smilodon has ever hunted pinnipeds, it is within the realm of possibilities that Smilodon could adapt into hunting them. This has been observed with lions on the skeleton coast in Namibia, as they're the only big cats that specialize in hunting pinnipeds. Also, there is the issue of the cats possibly preying on domestic livestock. But this issue is pretty low on the list of concerns because there are no longer any cattle operations on the island, as the island's con conservation group has relocated all cattle and other livestock to the mainland. The only livestock that is a concern are horses, which, native, which natives and tourists use to ride around the island on. Since isotopic analysis on the La Brea tarfic specimens has confirmed that saber-toothed cats have hunted horses during the Ice Age, this is a concern. And this also will lead to the next concern, possible predation on humans. It is unlikely that Smilodon would view humans as a potential food source, since they are more designed for large animals, and humans are too small. But there are two factors that would still make it a concern all the same. One is that paleontological evidence has shown that young saber-toothed cat's fangs are smaller than those of fully grown adult adults and can eat carcasses and prey items that adult cats would find too bony for them to eat. And in modern big cats, it is usually the young individuals that potentially become man-eaters. So reason would indicate that this would be the same for saber-toothed cats. The second factor is that as with modern big cats, saber-toothed cats will go after prey even if they were not hungry. Like a lot of predators, big cats will be motivated to hunt something due to sudden movements. A basic example would be your dog chasing a car. There have been cases that illustrate a leopard going after another object of prey even though it has just killed another prey animal. This is stimulated by the second by the second objects of prey's movement. So a jogger, a mountain biker, or a running hiker would definitely trigger the prey response in the saber toothed cat, and a dangerous and fatal encounter could occur. On a side note, there is one possible bit of proof that Smilodon might become a man eater relatively easily. In Africa, in ancient times, there has been proof that saber-toothed cats have hunted hominids back then, 
and that could easily translate into hunting modern humans. But while lions and jaguars, for example, are closely related to each other, lions more likely be a man-eater than the jaguar, so this is not completely reliable. There are four things that could be done to avoid such deadly encounters. One would be to educate the tourists and community about these big cats, and all the tips on how to avoid these cats, or how to act around them. Another would be to place trackers, tracers, in all the same tooth cats, since there will be a small controlled number of them, this should be practical. The second thing would be to develop a handheld or belt or wrist held for bikers and joggers device that tourists could, could rent and have so that I could be able to warn them when they're close to a safe tooth cat, probably about 50 to 100 yards away. The final one would be to give each tourist a can of pepper spray or, a, or another detergent in case of an unavoidable attack. So in this uh, hypothetical one of scenario, introducing saber-toothed cats to Santa Canary Island would be an interesting scenario, especially like a uh, in, in potential tourism benefits and probably some ecological pros. However, in the long term, this would not be a good idea. The island is too small with not enough bison to be able to support a breeding population of saber-toothed cats, and there's also the potential danger between the between humans and saber tooths So, long story short, might not be a good idea. I hope you've all enjoyed this fun what if scenario. This is this is this scenario was actually based off an old college paper I did for an ethics class. So it was definitely a lot of fun to look look back to look back into it and even add some extra information about it. On the next video is a video I'm pretty sure a lot of you are waiting for. A video that covers the general welfare and health of Tyrannosaurus Rex in captivity. Then, since that Tyrannosaurus Rex is one of my favorite dinosaurs, it's definitely good. It's definitely one video I definitely have been looking forward to doing for a long time. Oh, and before you guys go. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone, or at least uh, early Halloween. And I actually used a mountain lion scream instead of the usual lion or tiger roar, was because, in actual fact, with what with what we are decipher from the bones, turns out that saber toothed cats are vocally are more similar to purring cats than they are to roaring cats, just at a lower frequency. I hope you have a good day. Adios.